For years, SQL Server has been my de facto go-to database for all data storage needs. But lately, I've been exploring a little bit of the world of Postgres, and I've been doing it in .NET. Let's mash on that. Hi, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the ASP.NET Monsters. It's been a little while since we've seen all of you fine people. We took a protracted break over Christmas, which turned into a New Year's break, which turned into a January break. Uh, <laughs> but we are back and we're going to talk a little bit about Postgres now. Um, so the, the background for this is basically that I have been chatting around uh, with some people about how much SQL Server costs on Azure. And I have never been super satisfied with the performance of SQL Server on Azure. Um, the vCore model is a little bit better than the DTU model, but it always felt like running it on my laptop was like astronomically faster than running it on some giant database server in the cloud, which makes no sense to me. Um, so we thought we might spend a little bit of time exploring Postgres and see if we can get a better deal out of that um, rather than hosting on SQL Server. But of course, Postgres is a different database, so it takes a little bit of getting used to to get it up and running. Um, so this is just yeah. the, like fresh out of the gate. How do we connect to a database using .NET? And then we'll build on this across a series of episodes. I often promise a series of episodes and then don't deliver, but I will deliver this, this time for sure. Yeah. <laughs> so this, this we've done, different. I think we've done maybe an episode on like how to create a Postgres database. In yeah, we, we did a, uh, one on how to create a database in Azure a little while ago. We'll link that down below. Uh, but this is just, I'm going to run this locally uh, and then we'll move up into the cloud as we go forward. So cool. to start with, I chose to just build this database using Docker. Um, so I have here a relatively small Docker command, which will make larger here. Uh, so I'm just using the, the stock Docker uh, Postgres image with a few flags to it. So I'm giving it a name. Uh, I'm mapping a data directory to a directory on disk uh, on my host machine here. Uh, I'm forwarding the Postgres port, which is an easy to remember, 5432, but no one. Uh, and then I've given it a password uh, and I have not given it a username. It's going to use the default username of Postgres. Uh, so I have that oh. running already. That data directory, mapping that data directory, that's so the, the data survives um, when you kill the container. Yeah, right? that's right. I wanted to have that on the host machine, uh, especially because I have misconfigured this Postgres thing a few times now and had to restart it. Uh, but it is up and running successfully now. Uh, one little gotcha that I had for doing port connections like this from the host machine is that I needed to change this pghba.com file. So this controls how connections are authenticated. And at the moment, back out of the box, it wouldn't let connections from my machine through. Uh, so I added this like overly zealous line right here. Let's make that even which is going to allow all connections from all hosts uh, to do that in production. Uh, and then I left the, the password as required on that one. Uh, now, there's a lot of different Postgres clients that you can use to play around with it and connect to it. I'm using just like the, the one that plugs into Visual Studio code here. Uh, so there's a couple of different extensions here. There's a Microsoft one, uh, which is not fabulous has like no UI or anything like that. And then there is this other Postgres one here, uh, which is what I'm using, which is nice because it adds a little tab alongside here and I can take a look at the database and see what's in it. Uh, so creating a database table is fairly simple here. I just created a quick script here. So I have a table called months, uh, which initially I just dropped because I had it already built. And then this is the equivalent of um, an automatically into uh, integrating, that's not the word I'm incrementing uh, number. Here, so this is serial, I've set that be the primary key. And then I just have a month name, which is a, a var child, which is pretty much the same as what you would expect on SQL Server. 
So let's kick off here a brand new project and at least show connecting to it. So we're going to create a new project here. Uh, we'll just do a console application and we'll call it PostGres mode 2. And we'll just run that through its paces here. Okay, so let's go take a look at connecting to this database. So first off, what we're going to need is uh, some ability to connect to the database using a client here. Uh, there's something that comes out of the box in .NET, so we need to just uh, install this driver called mpgsql. Oh, wait. I'm doing the right tab here. Uh, and there it is. So we will go and install that. And then over here, we can ditch the default implementation here. Uh, and we'll start off with just a connection string here. So I'm connecting to the local host. The username is Postgres, password is of course mega password. And I'm just connecting to this demo database that exists out there. Uh, so this now works a little bit like this, pretty much as you would expect things to work. So we're gonna create a new connection based on that connection string. We're gonna open that connection um, and then we can perhaps insert some data into the database here. Uh, so I'm gonna comment that. That was not the right keystroke. change the capitalization here through some useful command. There we go. <laughs> so apparently there's a shortcut key that changes everything to lowercase. Yeah, I wonder what magical key you I pressed. Don't, I don't know why you would want such a thing. <laughs> All right. Uh, so I previously said in January, it's, it's uh, March today. All right, so this is pretty simple. Connect to the database run that and away we go. So we can just run that and I'm just gonna do a console. So these connections and commands, are they like IDB connections and I command they IDB are. commands from? Yeah, cool. so they should synchronize that from nicely. ADO. And we'll exploit that in a moment. Uh, so we'll just run that here and There we go, let's go on and insert a record. I should put something there to let you know that it's done. But now if we drop back over here and we take a look at this thing here, we can just select the top rows and there we go, we've got March in there. We also have two Januaries. It's a good year to have two Januaries. Gives you an extra opportunity to pretend that you're gonna to go to the gym. Yep. Okay, uh, so reading the data, also pretty simple here. Uh, you notice that everything here is nicely async. So use that, April. So we're gonna select months from months. Uh, we're just gonna throw those out to the console here and wait for it to complete. All right, so there we go. It's as simple as it gets with retrieving data. Um, but obviously taking a look at this code, it kind of sucks. Like this is, this is what connecting to a database used to be like years ago where you kind of go in and then use a reader to get string and all of that. I don't think that people are generally doing this anymore directly. Um, so there's lots of other ways of doing that. And we can add a new package here. We'll add Dapper in. So we get lucky. So as you mentioned, everything implements the, the right interfaces for this. So we can actually just go in Head and use Dapper right out of the box, and we can replace our kind of clumsy way of doing things here um, with a slightly more Dappery way of doing things here. Months is equal to. Like Dapper had a cool new logo there. I don't think I've noticed that before. Yeah. Yeah, I haven't played with that. I've seen that in a while. So month from months. Just print that out for each month. At months. And we'll just do a console right line month. 
All right. Run that through again here. Let's see what we get. So there we go. That's our months printed Magic. out again. Um, so yeah, it's pretty, pretty simple stuff. Um, works pretty well. We haven't explored some of the cooler stuff within here yet, um, but we will do that in subsequent episodes. I had a, a question for you. I don't know if you'll know the answer, but do you know if they're doing, they're actually doing async in the underlying? Uh, I think they actually are doing async stuff in the underlying cover. So um, yep. there's quite there a There's some other providers that are notorious for, like they provide the async methods because they have to, but then it's actually just doing synchronous code under the covers. Mm -hmm. So this MPG SQL driver is actually pretty good. It has a lot of focus on it. And the cool. reason for it is because Postgres is a database that is used in that benchmarking suite that uh, .NET is always near the top of. Um, right. So in order to get that to work well, there's been a non-trivial amount of effort put into making this driver like fast and effective and all mm -hmm. of those things. Uh, so that's one of the reasons that I was interested in Postgres because cool. it's got a lot of focus on it. All right. Well, thank you everybody for joining us today. Remember to like, comment, and share, and we'll see everybody next episode. Bye. Bye.